Hi, today is a bit of a special episode with an exceptional guest that I fully believe defines exactly what karate do is and how it can be used to overcome your worst opponent. Many people train in karate and the martial arts as a method of self-defense, but the interesting thing is how we define that. We train so that we can protect ourselves from harm, not just from the chance encounter with an attacker, but from the person that we encounter and have to live with every day, ourselves. Today's guest is a man named Ian McLeod, who unfortunately after a series of accidents has been left with a traumatic brain injury. Ian faces a level of pain and challenges that most of us would not be able to relate to. Now, while the easy road would be to accept it and live with the limitations, Ian decided not to accept it and instead he turned to the martial arts as a method to reclaim his life. Ian and his sensei shared his story with us to remind us that the martial arts is about learning how to fight, but that fight doesn't always occur out in the streets. We are TBI survivors for a reason. We survive. I absolutely love this quote, and this actually hits a chord on what we want to talk about today. This episode isn't just about overcoming minor inconveniences, but it's about dealing with reality, facing real pain and real obstacles that most people can't relate to. Ian, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what life was like before, and what happened to change that? Oh, as I said, uh, brain injury survivor. That uh, pretty much honestly says it all not an easy road to uh, to travel and uh, once you actually have it it's uh, difficult to uh, constantly be uh, defending who you are when people can't see the injury itself my my brain injury is a accumulation of numerous concussions over over many years doing many different sports many different accidents and whatnot started playing ice hockey in in the mid 70s and it was an extremely rough and tumble time. It was a lot of head injuries, which back then nobody actually knew what head injuries really were. Um, I've had uh, several car accidents. I was in a motorcycle accident. I could crush between two trucks. Then in uh, 2016, um, things really came to a true head. I had uh, three, three accidents in the span of six months. I had a rear end accident, uh, so a front to back head injury. And uh, a couple of months after that, I was T-boned. My car was just destroyed when somebody hit me. And uh, a few months after that, I was in an elevator that uh, fell three stories. And that was a totally different concussion. So front to back, side to side, and then up and down. I guess the struggle with that is they're just concussions but when they're 12 13 and on and on and on the compounded damage is is very difficult i had to basically relearn to walk learning that my balance was destroyed and uh, having to to read just relearn to completely stand on my feet and go from there i guess my last concussion after that um, my son and i were playing in in the pool at the building i was living in at the time we were practicing throws in the pool and he absolutely booted me in the back of the head surprisingly as that sounds it was probably the best thing that could have happened to me because i was having all these chemicals being released into my brain which were causing me to become very aggressive and this last concussion at least shut off the part of the brain that was producing those chemicals so now I'm back to being the charming person I am today. I find it actually really extremely fascinating that you did decide to turn to the martial arts. What made you continue down this path of the martial arts? And can you tell us about the art that you chose? Well, what, what chose me into martial arts is I was having zero success with uh, Western medicine. Um, very few doctors here at at least Canada believe that you can get a, a a brain injury from numerous concussions. I've been having great success dealing with a um, Eastern practitioner of arts. He's a Shaolin monk, and um, he's helped me a great deal. In, um, well, I guess, mid-2017, September, I got my son involved in uh, martial arts. I was asked to join uh, the program, but I was far too injured at that point. And, um, so I started in the parent-child program that my sensei runs at the school, so parents can obviously train with their 
with their children. It's a tremendous experience. Well, I met Sensei Porter um, through her other job as a as a mediator. And uh, when I had set up the appointment to actually meet her, I was waiting in her office and uh, she she walks in in her gi. And apparently I'm the only person she's ever done that with. And I was actually immediately put at uh, at ease because I actually be, believe people who, are, who train are black belts, they believe differently. And um, so that really put me at ease right then and there. And um, she knew me before my injuries. She knew me before the 2016. So she had a really good idea of who I was um, before I started training. Um, Sensei is just an incredible person. He reached out to me for a, a different matter, a different occupation. I'm also a accredited family mediator and a parenting coordinator. I've been so for 20 years and he ended up becoming my client. He and his, his ex-wife were my clients. So I've known Ian for a long time. Um, because of the gi, we talked about some martial arts and I told him that I was going to be opening my own school. And perhaps after all the legal stuff was done, that maybe he or his son in particular would like to join and train. And uh, he signed up, he and his ex-wife signed up his son almost right away. So I decided to uh, to turn to martial arts instead. I figured that would be the best way to uh, learn how to control my body because it's all about discipline. There's, there's consequences to all your actions. I actually uh, discovered I was training uh, Goju Ryu. I just wanted to get into the into martial arts. I had no idea what um, karate was about in any way, shape or form when I did this. Over the time I've actually been here at the dojo, I've learned a fair bit about what Goju is about, the hard, soft way. It, it just resonates greatly with me that I live such an extremely difficult life. Um, I, I suffer pain, so much pain and uh, yeah. Um, but Goju, that's what it teaches you. You know, there's hard parts in your life and it uh, can teach you to enjoy the softer parts of your life as well, more Taoism. Even though I am truly injured, I, I, I have a purpose where I can actually help um, a lot of other people with disabilities as well. After four years of training, I'm, I'm much more calm and able to, to deal with people. And now we have several disabled students, both children and adults here in the dojo. They're really seeing that they can change and improve their lives after hearing my story. And, and I've sh shared this with my chronic pain groups, my brain injury groups all over the world so they can see who I am and fully understand how far I've come. Um, in fact, I still keep the mobility scooter that I first started coming down to the dojo in, in one of the change rooms that's not in use because of the COVID restrictions. And it's a reminder now. And when people come in here and talk, I'm able to actually show them what I what I drove into the dojo on. And they're just astounded at what I'm able to actually do now. I want to ask you a question because I, I saw you make a post at one point that uh, doing the martial arts and doing the goju, it actually helps quiet your mind. Can you walk us through that process of when you're actually in training? So when you're running a kata, you're just, you're training yourself to completely tune out the outside world and everything that's going in, going on there while you're, you're running a, a beautiful kata. It's, it's very easy to accept pain um, when you, when you train, when you do something physically active, it makes your day a little bit uh, happier to know you've done something actually productive which releases a lot of uh, chemicals in your brain that allows you to mask some of the pain that's going on. And then when you're at home at night, um, you're able to say, well, I hurt this bad today. I'm this mentally exhausted today because I, I actually did something. I didn't just wake up and hurt. So it's tricks I've learned to, to trick the body into accepting pain. Uh, there's no point in just sitting at home um, crying about the pain, it doesn't go away. It just doesn't. So it's it's easier and better to trick the brain into accepting the pain so you don't become a vile, nauseous person to, to those around you that end up tending to hate you over time when, when, when you're just down on yourself.
before the interview started, I was so nervous. I, I threw a few hundred punches at the monkey war and the the bean bags uh, that we have on the uh, concrete blocks just to, to get some of the attention out of them. I, martial arts for, for people with brain injuries is, is absolutely astounding. I recommend it to all the people in our brain injury groups that I'm a part of. So, Can you tell us a little bit about your school overall? School overall is non-sport, non-tournament, non-competition. I teach lessons here and I have a, a very old school philosophy about what training, what martial arts is, what gojuru is. And it is about balance. You know, um, I have the intention of students enjoying their training. I don't want it to be militant. I don't want it to be so harshly structured that they're not enjoying. So I have a nice balance between some fun and laughter. However, when kata begins, it's serious. It's, it's hard. So we have the hard and the soft. Every person's program in here is designed around who they are individually. So it, it's amazing that way. So she's taken in full consideration to my extreme injury. She's got so many degrees. It's absolutely incredible. So she has a real understanding of so many different things. When I first started training, um, one of the one of the aspects that was being presented to me was this is going to be a safe place for training. Nobody will ever make fun of somebody else because they can't throw a kick properly or they can't speak properly, which is, uh, it's really important. We do have now uh, a number of people with, with disabilities and, you know, mental health issues here that train here at the dojo. So it's been extremely exciting to see everybody work so well with everybody else. Can you tell us what your, what was your hardest challenge so far in, in class on the mat? I couldn't understand when I first started, why my body able to do anything just completely failed being able to move my body, turn, you know, it was so difficult. So I guess the, the just trying to reteach my body how to do its job uh, was the most difficult thing at that time. That was, I guess, four years ago. So the last six months, I would assume for me, the most difficult thing is actually um, training with the children um, every second that you're that you're working with them is teaching me how to control myself and not get excited when they can't do things that I've just really learned to do myself they're children it took me four years to uh, to count to 10 in Japanese four years they do it after a couple of weeks of training here so I've learned already now that uh, I'm going to have these bad days where I can't remember stuff and what I did yesterday, I might not be able to do today because my memory's just not there. Um, so it, we take it now really more in stride. Do you have a favorite drill or exercise in class? To be honest with you, I enjoy every second, everything we do in this dojo because the fact that I'm actually in here being, being able to do it is so joyous. You know, it just makes me so happy. I'm, I'm, I'm the bad guy in class that laughs and giggles because I actually able to do stuff. I, uh, I laughed at the end of uh, running Sanchin Kata at one of my dojos uh, because I actually did it really well. I was just so happy I was able to get through the actual Kata with her kicking me, with her punching me, and focus on the actual Kata itself. It was just an incredible experience for me. So you talked about your challenges and you had to relearn to walk again and how to control your emotions again. So people who have not had a TBI, they can understand that concept of it. But what is something that a person might not understand or a challenge someone might not understand about a TBI? You can get angry at something when you don't have a brain injury and get over it pretty quickly. When you have a brain injury, it can go on for a very, very long time. You don't just get to switch off problems. Um, they can ruminate with you for hours, days, or weeks for some people. I think that the biggest struggle on a daily basis is what is his mental state at the time? So one of his challenges is learning how to leave the outside world outside once he passes the threshold and bows in. To leave all that behind is what Ian has been working on. I face a great deal of discrimination because to be honest with you, I look really good. Um, you know, I look fairly fit. I look very strong, active, 
but you can't see the turmoil that's going on inside the head and people just don't understand it. Well, you look good, you sound good. Um, I don't understand what your problem is. You can't see his injuries. So somebody else out in the world will assume. Ian was at um, the local store and he was trying to purchase a bottle of wine for a dinner that he was going to. And he was having an off day. People with brain injuries often slur their words. The woman behind the cash made an assumption. She assumed that he was drinking, that he was intoxicated. In fact, he wasn't because he had just finished teaching here at the dojo. He assists me with the children and he had just finished assisting me. And she refused him service outright refused him service and the security guard came running in and there was a big issue. Somebody with a brain injury who somewhat slurs their words encounters a person who makes an assumption then is demoralized and that happens a lot. They, a lot of assumptions happen because you can't see you can't see the cast on the arm. What is your message for anyone out there who might have a disability or a challenge and they're looking to join the martial arts and they're kind of on the fence? What advice can you give them? Give it a try. Interview the sensei. Like, don't just walk into a class. If you need to feel comfortable somewhere and walking into an unknown place isn't you know, a, a comfortable thing for you to do, a good sensei would set aside time. A sensei would say, yeah, sure, come on in, let's have a chat. A sensei can have a profound effect on your life, one way or another, right? The wrong sensei for you can do damage, right? The right, right sensei can lift you up. I would like to um, first congratulate you on your recent uh, brown belt uh, achievement. And as you continue to train, you, you're, you're working your way towards black belt. What does that milestone mean to you? And what are your plans afterwards? Uh, realistically for me, uh, once I grade black, it means I just learned the basics and uh, the real training is actually starting. Um, it's, it's a great milestone to teach me that I know absolutely nothing. My future is to spend the rest of my life attempting to perfect myself and pass on what I've learned um, to other people who have injuries like myself. Hopefully I have my own class to actually just people with disabilities being a part of so and i think that would be a wonderful thing to do well some of the great grandmasters in history you know they began their passing karate to overcome sickness and weakness ian you walk through hell yet you still hold your head above all the flames you've used your training to not only improve yourself but to stand as a beacon of inspiration for others who might be facing the similar challenges if anyone were to walk away from this video with only one message what do you want that message to be never give up on yourself Never stop trying. If you stop trying, you might as well uh, just get ready to die because that's what you're basically doing. So never give up. Always fight. How can people find you if they're interested in, in reaching out to you or, or joining your classes? Go online, uh, my website, uh, call me, chat with me. I have no problem with people reaching out if, if they don't live in my area then I'll do online classes if that's what makes you comfortable. With COVID, a lot of people still don't want to leave their homes. So we'll do private online, or you can join um, the class that's going on in here online, right? Uh, it's always possible to train. To say, no, I can't train is very defeatist. You have to say, yeah, I can do it. Ian said, I can do this, and he did. Well, thank you so much, Ian, for your time today and for letting us walk a little bit with you on your journey. You might not have your black belt yet, but you're already showing us what a true martial artist looks like. Thank you so much. Arigato gozaimashita. So if you are facing some challenges in your life that are having a negative impact, I sincerely hope that this gives you the inspiration to step onto the mat, either literally or figuratively. Ian teaches us that you don't have to accept your boundaries, but you can learn to push them. Today, sir, you are our sensei.